as you may see from the structure of the course given at, in the syllabus and on the course website, um, each day has a theme. And the theme for today, and, ha and a spiritual law associated with it as well. So each day we have a theme and a spiritual law. The theme and the law have both been derived from the book, Wisdom from World Religions. And the theme for today is the divinity of the world. And uh, that's my phrase, but it's, I think, a fair, uh, a fair uh, uh, interpretation of Sir John's own expression, which I think is a brilliantly stated uh, phrase, God life moving through all. So the theme for today is the divinity of the world, God life moving through all. And the spiritual law are John, Sir John's words, um, are Sir John's words, regardless of whatever situation that may be present, the factor of life, God life moving through all, is cause for thanksgiving and rejoicing. Um, and in my view, this is the most original phrase in the whole book. And in fact, it's a phrase, I think, that's worthy of some of the great mystical poets of the world's great religious traditions. This, this notion of the factor of life, God life moving through all. Uh, this phrase has remained with me uh, uh, as I've read this book, uh, and it stays with me, and I'm sure it will long stay with me. This is just one of many such striking phrases in this book. Another is just simply to choose one almost at random. Part of a longer question is this. Is there a brightness to living? What would this brightness be? Well, the brightness to living is God life moving through all. What is God life moving through all? Well, you, one could state that as a doctrine. Perhaps some might think pantheism. Sir John was more partial to expressions like panentheism, and there is a big difference between the two, but perhaps not for now. We will not go into that, that difference. Um, but the idea that the world is an uh, is an expression of the divine consciousness, and that we ourselves are expressions of divine consciousness, that in fact everything in some sense is irradiated with the divine life, is at the very foundation of the optimistic spiritual vision that animated uh, Sir John's uh, approach to the spiritual life. So um, in these lectures, I do want to bring a bit of order to them, and you'll probably see somewhere at the course website, uh, when that's fully constructed, that for each day, for each lesson, I will have three, usually three, learning objectives. And there will be some discussion questions associated with them as well. And uh, the learning objectives for this session are to outline the unitive, pluralist, spiritual views of Sir John Templeton, to describe his religious background, and to compare uh, his views with similar teachings in other religious traditions. That, um, so a few words about this extraordinary phrase. Um, how is it possible that someone uh, who uh, has the religious background that Sir John had, how is it how does such a person become a religious pluralist? Well, all of us who are religious pluralists can ask ourselves the same question. I'm a religious pluralist, but I wasn't born a religious pluralist. I came to that through a long uh, process of encountering and taking on board many of the teachings and practices of multiple religious traditions. For myself, I'll say up front that I've been most deeply shaped by the Christian, Hindu, and Buddhist traditions. And in each of those traditions, different schools have decisively shaped me in both my schooling and in my personal commitment. So I bring those three religious traditions with me wherever I go and whatever, whenever I think about matters spiritual and religious. Sir John had uh, his own uh, approach was deeply shaped. You might say the, 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 the trajectory of his spiritual life, which might have gone in one direction, was actually altered decisively because of his mother's influence. They were Presbyterians, devout Presbyterians, but uh, she began to read and to share with uh, John when he was a boy New Thought literature, uh, especially uh, as was expressed by the, the, the New Thought form of, uh, of practical Christianity that was quite popular in those days and still remains to be a, 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 a popular religious movement uh, uh, today, Unity or what was then known as the Unity School of Christianity. And Unity 
uh, as the word implies, is much closer to uh, ways of thinking that many of us might uh, assume are, are Hindu. Uh, of course, when we say Hindu, we have to qualify that because there's a great diversity in Hinduism, as in other religious traditions. And what we're probably talking about at that moment is a specific teaching of a particular school of Vedanta that holds that in our deepest selves, we are the divine, and that the whole of creation is nothing more than a reflection of this divine consciousness. So unity uh, brought that idea into the U.S. mainstream already in the 1890s. It was the same time when Swami Vivekananda was bringing the message of Vedanta uh, to the Western world, but more about that in other contexts. And so this is probably uh, what changed the, the, the flow of his spiritual life, because unity is itself an expression of a changed spiritual perspective in the United States and in Europe that resulted from the encounter with the Upanishads, great ancient Hindu spiritual texts. And so in some ways, unity and new thought can be seen as one of the first results of the interaction or the encounter of Protestant Christianity with Vedantic Hinduism. And so um, that is probably a, a helpful factor. Um, but added to that was, uh, was John Templeton's own deep and profound spirituality. Um, in many ways, we can think of Sir John as a practical mystic, and I would even say a saint of the practical life. Uh, one of his uh, colleagues, friends, and biographers, William Proctor, wrote, He had the power, perhaps something close to divine power, to achieve what he believed he could achieve. And so um, what we see then in his writings on spirituality is a desire to bring uh, the qualities of wisdom more uh, into our everyday lives to decisively shape our, our personal and collective lives. And the reality of that, the, the, the achievement is, of course, these many, uh, this foundation that gives grants to help religious scholars and scientists work together to try to bring a richness, a deepness, a brightness to our common, common living together. Um, as we go through this course together, uh, I, I think that there are a number of sort of labels that we could give to, uh, to John Templeton. Here we're not concerned with John Templeton, the investor or the financier. And some of these uh, expressions, these labels, these titles might be Templeton as practical mystic and saint of the practical life. Uh, J Sir John Templeton as moral and spiritual educator, because he was a moralist in the best sense of that term, someone who uh, aspires to help us to live a better life grounded in a change in our, in our ethical preoccupations, someone who teaches us to reflect upon why we do the things we do, why we say the things we say, and to aspire to bring our conduct and our thoughts in line with a much higher ethical and spiritual standard. We could use more of that in our common life today, a life that's unfortunately all too much dominated by celebrity news and worship of, of, of the wealthy. We really need to bring ourselves back to uh, an encounter with the profound wisdom traditions that can teach us how to live significant and meaningful lives grounded in eternal principles. Sir John Templeton as a spiritual explorer, because he was that. How bold, how daring it was of him to uh, venture out into uh, an attempt to make sense of all of these religious traditions, given his own theological background. And not only that, but to try to uh, bring science on board, to not uh, reject science and become a literalist or a fundamentalist, but to reject those tendencies and to remain open to science in all of its dimensions, and yet never sacrificing the idea that there is a immaterial uh, dimension to life. And then finally, Sir John Templeton can be seen as a person of tradition. I myself attend towards the liberal side of things in my politics and, and other matters. But when it comes to a spirituality, in some sense, I'm a great traditionalist and very conservative in that respect, because I think Sir John Templeton argued that in these traditions, we can find the wisdom that can help us to guide our lives aright.